from times when we see things dark and the way. Say it, say Faith's light I cannot see. I ask my dear Lord to brighten the way. He whispers sweetly. How many said that? In a still, small voice, we are told it's a voice that dispels all fear. When I'm in doubt, troubled soul, that still small voice I can hear. Trust him through faith, but faith hold his hand. Sometimes my faith is weak, but then when I answer and take command, seems I this week. I uh, started off uh, early part of the week. Uh, if I move funny, I've got the scratches. Uh, I've got the shingles and that, it ain't no fun. Uh, but anyway, that's all right. I'm making it. I'm, I'm thankful I'm able to come to church, but so if I act funny, that's the reason. I, you know, they itch and they burn and they're sore. But early part of the week, Tracy uh, and them got moved to Martinsburg, West Virginia, which is up in the Panhandle. And uh, they, they went into a jail up there and uh, didn't know what was going on. But the next day, he began to witness to this man, 47 years old, and telling him not what he knew about the Bible, but what God had done for him. Yeah, praise the Lord. And that man said, you think if your preacher would call, he would pray with me. And so the next day they called me, and I began to talk to him. And I said, would you like for me to pray with you? He said, I sure would. He said, preacher, let me tell you a little bit about me. He said, I'm very undeserving. And he said, I don't deserve any blessings. He said, but I need help in my life. He said, most of my life, he said, the majority of my life has been behind bars. That's all I've known. He said, in 25 months, they tell me that I'm going to get out. He said, I've got out before, but I turned and went back down the same path. And I ended up here again. He said, preacher, pray that when I get out, he said, I've surrendered my life to the Lord that God would have a place for me. He said, I have no family. He said, God would have a place for me that I could live my life glorifying Him. Wasn't that a wonderful experience? I tell you, it's a, th it, it, it's a wonderful blessing to be a child of God. Yeah. Then Tammy shared something with me that kind of broke my heart. Randy Curry and I talked from time to time he and I was talking yesterday about this, and he shared something. But uh, Tammy was was seeing a patient in the hospital this week. Got to talking to him while he was 
while she was doing whatever she needed to do. Found out that he was retired. He worked part-time down to Civic Center, being a, a, an usher or a security guard, whatever. And uh, she began to talk to him about his job. Told her that he got, he had the privilege to hear a lot of famous people and meet a lot of famous people. Tammy said, I guess you've seen some rough times, run into some bad situations, haven't you? He said, yeah. Said, I've seen a few of those. Said, Tammy said, now, uh, who's the worst crowd? She was expecting the man to say, oh, it's a wild rock thumping head banging bunch. She was expecting him to say, all oh, that redneck bunch that listens to that wild country music. He looked at her and said, ma'am, I'm sorry to say, but it's the ones that comes to the Christian concerts. Oh, they fuss over everything. Somebody got their seat. Somebody made them mad. How disgraceful for a Christian witness to be. My goodness gracious. I'm telling you what Randy and I was talking yesterday. He said, Richard, sometimes I think people just think that they wear their Christian outfit on Sunday when they go to church. But I don't care where we are or what we're doing. I'm telling you, if with the love of God abides in us, listen, it'll shine no matter where we're at. Somebody asked me this week, they said, Preacher, I want to ask you something. I said, what's that? They said, now listen. Said, do you believe the Lord will save everybody? Oh, I said, I sure do. Said, what about a deaf or dumb person? One that can't talk and one that can't hear. Do you believe that God can save them even though they don't understand? I said, let me tell you a story. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's something about the power of God. I know I'm just supposed to testify. But anyway, I, I said there's something about the power of God. I don't care if it's man, woman, beast, or fowl, fish of the sea. When the Spirit of God moves upon a living being, they notice a change in their lives. I said I could tell you many stories in the Bible how that God spoke to a rooster one time. Said I want you to go preach to the man of God. Listen to me. God spoke to a big fish and told him go pick up the preacher that's been disobedient. I said but I'll take it to my home. My mother-in-law and father-in-law had a dog one time. Something happened to its spine. Listen to me. I believe the word of God. I believe it wholeheartedly from front to back. But since I've been walking with Jesus, his word has come alive in my heart. And not only in my heart, but in my life. I said, my mother-in-law and father-in-law had a dog, a Pekingese that got down its back. And I said, uh, took it to the doctor, and it drove its back legs. And the doctor, I've shared this with the church, with those that's been a while, but it's been two or three years since I shared it, so we got some new folks. If this is boring to the old folks, just take you a nap or something. <laughs> Praise the Lord, but it gets better every time I tell it. Thank God it's real. Vance said, well, we can do surgery or we can put it to sleep. Said, ain't much hope. Make a long story short, we anointed that Pekingese, Sean. Yes, sir. We, and Pekingese had no idea what we was doing. I got him up on my lap, but I anointed him in the name of Jesus. I get around and prayed. Listen, that Pekingese didn't start hollering, praise the Lord, I'm healed. That Pekingese never said Thank you, Jesus. But he felt something when God moved on his body. He jumped off of my lap and around and around and around and around that coffee table he went. Something moved. That man looked at me like I was crazy. I said, you asked me. I said, the power of God's great. In closing my testimony. 
I was talking with Brother Roger Duncan Hoy called me Friday and he said, Brother Richard, right, Dad and Mom ain't going to be able to come. Dad's just too weak for the trip. And uh, so I called Brother Roger yesterday evening and it was sad. He still cries. But somebody wrote a song and said, Tears are a language that God understands. A man that's preached all over, not only in this nation, but in other nations. And shared and seen thousands come to Jesus. Now has barely got voice enough to carry on a conversation. But he can still get out. God's been good to me. And he cries a lot. And I got that over off the phone. And I said, man. And then Brother Jimmy tried to lift me up. He said, for long, said, you know, you're getting so old, you'll probably get like that. That was encouraging. I thank God for good people. I know how Job felt. Good friends encouraging you. But I thought, so it happens to me. So it happened, if it would happen to me. I think I could still preach without being able to utter a word from my lips. I turned me a good one. I turned me a good one. Right here be another one. Do you know what? How about thought of this? I've felt it many, many times. Power of God so great. I've never heard the Lord's voice, and He's talked to me a lot, and He's spoken to me a lot. But some of the best words He ever spoke to me was when He done this. Oh, yeah. Amen. How many has had that to happen? When the devil made me feel like I was trash, the Holy Spirit come back good. I'm telling you here this morning, if the devil's told you that you ain't worth saving, if you pay close attention, you'll feel the Spirit of God come back. Yeah. 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 I know you're too short for us to be hugging, but anyways, <laughs> some, sometimes, listen, sometimes, huh? He's given me more than a stand there, more than a pat on the back. He's coming. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Not under the word. Yeah. I'll share the young ones another story. True story. Y'all remember Dummy Brown? This preacher was, this pastor was preaching one Sunday and they had a man in the community they called Dummy, Dummy Brown, Brother Sean. Dummy Brown was deaf and dumb. He, he just walked around most of the time. Every once in a while he'd come to church. You know them self-righteous folks. Churches don't ever get self-righteous. Oh, he came to seek and to save that which was lost, and we're proof of it. Some said, I don't even know why they let Dummy Brown come in. He can't get nothing out of the service. But that pastor said one night he preached, thought he thought he preached. Listen, this is the way it goes. Sometimes after I preached and I stand at the door and shake people's hand. I feel, boy, I, I feel like, boy, I shored them tonight. I didn't do a very good job. And I didn't give them what they got me here to, to do. But this pastor said that night he felt like that he, he had done his worst job on preaching the sermon. He said, I know nobody's going to respond, but I'll go ahead and give an invitation anyway. 
and looked and held the back and Dummy Brown. Somebody couldn't hear a word he said, couldn't respond to him from his own lips. Dummy Brown come up the aisle with tears running down his face and knelt at the altar. He couldn't talk, he couldn't say nothing. But he sat there and knelt there at the altar and wept on the altar a big old puddle of tears. Again, some of the people in the church that knew the Bible real well. You think that folks knows the Bible too good? Some of them do. Too good for their own britches. You know what I'm saying? Boys, if the Spirit don't abide, it's just another book. Folks is trying to figure it out without the Spirit of God in their lives. They ain't going to figure it out. Well, it contradicts itself. It won't if the Spirit of God's in you. Some of the self-righteous folks said, he couldn't have got nothing. He, said, he, can't, he can't hear what the preacher's saying. He may have not heard what the preacher's saying, but the Holy Spirit touched his heart. Next day, the man at the hardware store called me. Pastor, and he said, Pastor, I need your help. He said, I don't know what's going on. He said, I was at church last night and I seen what Dummy Brown done. He said, He come in here this morning, bought some rope and a hatchet. He said, I'd go if I had time, but I got a store full of customers. He said, Would you go check and see what he's up to? Pastor said, I sure will. He looked over the community and finally found him. Dummy Brown cut him down two trees, took that rope and made him a cross. He was standing on the side of the road, holding that cross, looking up to heaven and patting his chest. Praise the Lord forever. We might not be able, I told a man today, don't try to tell, tell somebody how much you know about the Bible. Just tell them what Jesus has done for you and it'll be effective every time. He speaks in a still, small voice. It's a voice that dispels all fear. Man, if you, you ought to run to the altar. When I'm in that troubled soul.
that long, we wouldn't get home in time to go to bed, would we? After they had died, they take the Ark of the Covenant. The Philistines, being pagans, just took it into the house of their god, a god of, you know, physical things. They thought, well, we got us another treasure for our storehouse. They didn't know what they was dealing with. Oh, my. Same was alive. They went in, what was the name of the uh, god of the Philistines? I can't remember. Dagon. Yeah, Dagon. Yeah. Took him into the house of Dagon. They went back in there, and Dagon was on his face in front of Let me tell you. you Hadn't been nobody true, in there. You meet the true and living God. You find everybody in the Bible. Uh, you know, I like that song, I Can Only Imagine. And even our song, when I see him, I say I might dance or I might sing, but I might just stand it on. Let me tell you, everybody that ever, uh, that ever encountered the true and living God ended up right on their face in front of him. At Dagon, that false god was no different. He was on his face in the temple. Nobody else had been in there. They set him back upright, went out and left, came back, and he was not only in the floor, he was broken into pieces. And they said, oh, Lord, we got to get rid of this thing. So they... They sent it away from, from uh, the house of Dagon into, I don't remember the name of the, the man's house that kept it after that, but he was blessed in every way. God's presence was there in his house and his, his uh, herds grew and his, his uh, fields prospered and his family, every, everything he did turned out good because the presence of God was there. And then finally we read about in the same book, David brings it back home how much rejoicing there was when it came back into, into Jerusalem. The presence of God was back with these people. A God that good. Come on, Virgin. And a God that merciful and a God that kind. It's a shame that I ain't going to have no more to give him than what I've had to give him. When I get there, and I look over my life, everything's recorded in a book. And for all he's done for me, man, that book don't contain anything worthy of his goodness That's right. that I've done in this side. Amen. So everything that he gives me, I owe back to him. Yes. Zach and them sings that song that we've sung for years. When a crown of life was placed on my head and a crown of righteousness, I mean, I'll just have to take it off and lay it down at his throne. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wear it. Amen. There's none righteous, none. Come on. But him. Mm -hmm. right, Richard. A lady shared a beautiful testimony in closing. From Kentucky, she shared this. She said, when she was in her 20s, her and her husband and her family lived beside this family in the hills of Kentucky. And she said, uh, there was a man and wife and five little children. She said, and the oldest child was eight years old. And this woman took sick and died. So they was poor family and said, that little eight-year-old girl stepped up, Bobby, and took the role of a mommy and the role of a cook and the role of a house cleaner. She just stepped up. Eight years old. Be up late at night. But very early in the morning because of the love that she possessed for her daddy and her four siblings. And it was no wonder at the age of 13, this little girl, her body so weak and so frail, the life that she lived, took sick and the doctor said, I'm, she's, just, she's just gone. But this lady said she would go over and visit with this old girl and said it was so heart touching. She'd read the Bible to her and pray with her. Said one evening, the little girl said, 
called her by name. She said, I'm not afraid to die. She said, I'm just ashamed to die. Amen. She said, what do you mean, honey? She said, you know how it's been since Mama died. She said, I've not got able. Said the Lord saved me when I was four years old. She said, "I love him. I love him." She said, "But I'm not complaining." She said, "But since Mama died, I ain't had time to do nothing for him." Amen. She said, "So I'm ashamed to stand before him." That lady said, "It's all she could do was to hold back the tears, Brother Sean." She said, honey, I don't know it all, but I got a good idea. If you feel ashamed when you get there, and you feel like you have nothing to offer him, or nothing to give, when you see him hold out your hands. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Church, it's not what we possess, but it's what we've done for the glory of God. Our hands will tell the story if we love him. If we love him. Yep. That's what he's looking for. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'd like to give you something. I'd like to give you something that you deserve, Lord. Something that would honor you. Something, Lord, that would bring you glory. Lord, anything that I would possess, it would be something that you've given to me. And I'd have to give back to you. So, Father, I pray that you would take our gratitude of our thanks. And Lord, the appreciation, Lord, for what you've done. God, that we would give it to you from our heart. We would bring honor and glory unto you. Help folks to realize this morning in this building they'll never deserve heaven. They'll never be good enough to go to heaven. But it's through and by mercy and grace that they'll get to see your kingdom. And I ask this morning, Lord, that you would give them courage to surrender and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Give me your grace because I have nothing to offer. Move as only you can. Yes, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. These good things I've done So little to me or if not for his love, I know where I'd be. I'd be lost without hope, no future in view. So when I see my Lord, my precious Lord, there's something I've got to I'll lay my crown at the master's feet. Then I'll bow down as the nations crown him king of all kings. Now shall